a fixed and narrow power with rigid forms. He saw the empire of the little life, an unhappy corner in eternity. It leaped upon the margin of the idea, protected by ignorance, as in a shell. Then, hoping to learn the secret of this world, he peered across its scanty fringe of sight to disengage from its surface clear obscurity the force that moved it and the idea that made imposing smallness on the infinite, the ruling spirit of its littleness, the divine law that gave it right to be, its claim on nature and its need in time. He plunged his gaze into the seas of mist that held this ill-lit straightened continent ringed with the skies and seas of ignorance and kept it safe from truth and self and light. As when a searchlight steps the night's blind breast and dwellings and trees and figures of men appear as if revealed to an eye in nothingness, all lurking things were torn out of their veils and held up in his vision's sun-white blaze. A busy, restless, sun-cut populace teemed in the dusky, unnoted thousands there, in a mist of secrecy, wrapping the world sea the little deities of time's nether act, who work remote from heaven's controlling eye, plotted, unknown to the creatures whom they move. The small conspiracies of this petty reign, amused with the small contrivings, the brief hopes and little eager steps and little ways, and reptile wallowings in the dark and dust, and the crouch and ignominy of creeping life. A trepidant and motley multitude, a strange pell-mell of magic artisans, was seen moulding the plastic clay of life, an elfin brew, an elemental kind. Astonished by the unaccustomed glow, as if Imanen, in the shadows, started up imps with dry limbs and carved beast visages, sprite prompters, goblin wizard or fairy small, and genii fairer but unsought and poor, and fallen beings, their heavenly portion lost and erring divinities trapped in time's dust. Ignorant and dangerous wills, but armed with power, half animal, half a god, they are moved, they are shaped. Out of the grayness of a dim background, their whispers come, an inarticulate force, awake in mind, an echoing thought or word. To their sting of impulse, the heart's ascension draw, and in that little nature do their work and feel its powers and creatures with unease. It's a seed of joy, the curse with sorrow's fruit, put out with error's breath, its scanty lights, and turn its surface truths to falsehood's ends, its small emotions spur, its passions drive to the abyss, or through the bog 
and mire, or else with a goad of hard dry lust the prick, while it jogs on devious ways that nowhere lead life's cart, finding no issue from ignorance. To sport with good and evil is their law, luring to failure and meaningless success, all models the corrupt, all measures cheat, make knowledge a poison, virtue a pattern dull, and lead the endless cycles of desire through semblances of sad or happy change to an inescapable fatality. All by their influence is enacted there. Not there alone is their empire or their role. Wherever are soulless minds and guideless lives, and in a small body's self is all that counts, wherever love and light and largeness lack, these crooked fashioners take up their task. To all half-conscious worlds they extend their ray. Here too these godlings drive our human hearts, our nature's twilight, is their lurking place. Here too the dark and primitive heart obeys the veiled suggestions of a hidden mind that dogs our knowledge with misleading light and stands between us and the truth that saves. It speaks to us with the voices of the night. Our darkened lives to greater darkness move, our seekings listen to calamitous hopes. A structure of unseeing thoughts is built and reason used by an irrational force. This earth alone is not our teacher and nurse. The powers of all the worlds have entrance here. In their own fields, they follow the wheel of law and cherish the safety of a settled type. On earth, out of their changeless orbit thrown, their law is kept, lost their fixed form of things. Into a creative chaos they are cast, where all ask order, but is driven by chance. Strangers to earth nature, they must learn earth's ways. Aliens or opposites, they must unite. They work and battle and with pain agree. These join, those part, all parts and joins anew, till all have found their divine harmony. Our life's uncertain way winds circling on. Our mind's unquiet search asks always light till they have learnt their secret in their source, in the light of the timeless and its spaceless home, in the joy of the eternal, soul and one. But now the light supreme is far away. Our conscious life obeys the inconscience laws. To ignorant purposes and blind desires, our hearts are moved by an ambiguous force. Even our mind's conquest were a battered crown. A slowly changing order binds our will. This is our doom until our souls are free. A mighty hand then rolls mind's firmaments back. Infinity takes up the finite acts and nature steps 
into the eternal light. Then only ends this dream of nether life. At the outset of this enigmatic world, which seems at once an enormous brute machine and a slow unmasking of the spirit in things in this revolving chamber without walls in which God sits impassive everywhere as if unknown to himself and by us unseen in a miracle of inconscient secrecy yet is all here his action and his will. In this world and sprawl through infinite vacancy the spirit became matter and lay in the world, a body sleepy, without sense or soul, a mass phenomenon of visible shapes, supported by the silence of the void, appeared in the eternal consciousness and seemed an outward and insensible world. There was none there to see and none to feel, only the miraculous inconscient, a subtle wizard skilled, was at its task, inventing ways for magical results, managing creation's marvelous device, marking mechanically dumb wisdom's points using the unthought, inevitable idea. It did the works of God's intelligence or wrought the will of some supreme unknown. Still consciousness was hidden in nature's womb. Unfelt was the bliss whose rapture dreamed the worlds. Being was an inert substance driven by force. At first was only an etheric space. Its huge vibrations circled round and round, housing some unconceived initiative, upheld by a supreme original breath, expansion and contractions mystic act, created touch and friction in the void into abstract emptiness, brought clash and clasp. Parent of an expanding universe, in a matrix of disintegrating force, by spending it conserved an endless sum. On the hearth of space, it kindled a viewless fire, that scattering worlds as one might scatter seeds, whirled out the luminous order of the stars, an ocean of electric energy, formlessly formed its strange wave particles, constructing by their dance this solid scheme, its mightiness in the atom shut to rest, Masses were forged or faint and visible shapes. Light flung the photons, swift revealing spark and showed in the minuteness of its flesh, imaged this cosmos of apparent things. Thus has been made this real impossible world, an obvious miracle or convincing show, or so it seems to man's audacious mind, who sees his thought as the arbiter of truth, his personal vision as impersonal fact, as witnesses of an objective world, his erring sense and his instruments artifice. Thus must work life's tangible riddle out 
in a doubtful light, by error seize on truth, and slowly part the visage and the veil. Or else, for lorn of faith in mind and sense, is knowledge a bright body of ignorance? He sees in all things strangely fashioned here the unwelcome jest of a deceiving force, a parable of Maya and her mind. This vast perpetual motion caught and held in the mysterious and unchanging change of the persistent movement we call time, these and ever renewing its recurrent beat, these mobile rounds that stereotype a flux, these static objects in the cosmic dance that are but energies self-repeating whirls, prolonged by the spirit of the brooding void, awaited life and sense and waking mind. A little the dreamer changed his pose of stone, but when the inconscient scrupulous work was done and chance coerced by fixed immutable laws a scene was set for nature's conscious play. Then stirred the spirit's mute, immobile sleep. The force concealed broke dumbly, slowly out. The dream of living woke in matter's heart. A will to live moved in the inconscious dust. A freak of living, startled vacant time, ephemeral in a blank eternity, infinitesimal in a dead infinite. A subtler breath quickened dead matter's forms. The world's set rhythm changed to a conscious cry. A serpent power Doing the insensible force. Islands of living dotted lifeless space and germs of living formed in formless air. A life was born that followed matter's law, ignorant of the motives of its steps, ever inconstant, yet forever the same. It repeated the paradox that gave it birth. Its restless and unstable stabilities record incessantly in the flow of time. And purposeful movements in unthinking forms betrayed the heavings of an imprisoned will. Waking and sleep lay locked in mutual arms. Helpless and indistinct came pleasure and pain, trembling with the first faint thrills of a world's soul. A strength of life that could not cry or move, yet broke into beauty, signing some deep delight. An inarticulate sensibility Throbs of the heart of an unknowing world ran through its somnolent top, and there stirred a vague, uncertain thrill, a wandering beat, a dim unclosing as of secret eyes. Infant self feeling grew, and birth was born. A god had oak but lay with dreaming limbs. Her house refused to open its sealed doors. Insentient to our eyes that only see the form, the act, and not the imprisoned God. Life hid in her pulse, occult of growth, 
and power, a consciousness with mute, stifled beats of sense, a mind suppressed that knew not yet of thought, an inert spirit that could only be. At first she raised no voice, no motion dared, charged with world power, instinct with living force. Only she clung with her roots to the safe earth, thrilled dumbly to the shocks of ray and breeze, and put out tendril fingers of desire. The strength in her yearning for sun and light felt not the embrace that made her breathe and live. Absorbed she dreamed, content with beauty and hue. At last the charmed immensity looked forth. A star, vibrant, hungry, she groped for might. Then slowly sense quivered and thought peered out. She forced the reluctant mold to grow aware. The magic was chiseled of a conscious form. Its tranced vibrations rhythmed a quick response and luminous stirrings prompted brain and nerve, awoke in matter spirit's identity, and in a body lit the miracle of the heart's love and the soul's witness gaze. Impelled by an unseen will, there could break out fragments of some vast impulse to become, and vivid glimpses of a secret self, and the doubtful seeds and force of shapes to be awoke from the inconscient soon of things. An animal creation crept and ran, and flew and called between the earth and sky, hunted by death, but hoping still to live, and glad to breathe, if only for a while. Then man was molded from the original brute, a thinking mind had come to lift life's moods, a keen-edged tool of a nature mixed and vague, an intelligence, half witness, half machine. This seeming driver of our wheel of works, mission to motive and record a drift, and fix its law on our inconstant powers. This master spring of a delicate engineering aspired to enlighten its user and refine, lifting to a vision of the indwelling power, the absorbed mechanics crude initiative. He raised his eyes, heaven light mirrored a face. Amazed at the works, Wrought in her mystic sleep, she looked upon the world that she had made. Wondering now, sees the great automaton. She paused to understand herself and aid. Pondering, she learned to act by conscious rule. A visioned measure guided her rhythmic steps. Thought bordered her instincts with a frame of will, and lit with the idea her blinded urge. On her mass of impulses, her reflex acts, on the inconscience pushed or guided drift, and mystery of unthinking accurate steps, she stuck the specious image of a self, a living idol, of disfigured spirit. On matter's acts, she imposed a patterned law. She made a thinking body from chemic cells, 
and molded a being out of a driven force. To be what she was not inflamed her hope. She turned her dream towards some high unknown. A breath was felt below of one supreme. An opening looked up to spheres above, and coloured shadows gleamed on mortal ground, the passing figures of immortal things. A quick celestial flash could sometimes come. The illumined soul ray fell on heart and flesh and touched to its semblances of ideal light, the stuff of which our earthly dreams are made. A fragile human love that could not last, ego's moth wings, to lift this seraph soul appear, a surface glimmer of brief date, extinguished by scanty breath of time. Joy that forgot mortality for a while came, a rare visitor who left betimes and made all things seem beautiful for an hour. Hopes that soon fade to drab realities, and passions that crumble to ashes while they blaze, kindle the common heart with their brief flame. A creature, insignificant and small, visited, uplifted by an unknown power, man labored on his little patch of earth for means to last, to enjoy, to suffer and to die. A spirit that perished not with the body and breath was there like a shadow of the unmanifest and stood behind the little personal form but claimed not yet this earthly embodiment. Assenting to nature's long, slow-moving toil, watching the works of his own ignorance, Unknown, unfelt, the mighty witness lives, and nothing shows the glory that is here. A wisdom governing the mystic world, a silence listening to the cry of life. It sees the hurrying crowd of moments stream towards the still greatness of a distant hour. This huge world unintelligibly turns in the shadow of a mused inconscience. It hides a key to inner meanings missed. It locks in our hearts a voice we cannot hear. An enigmatic labor of the spirit, an exact machine, of which none knows the use, an art and ingenuity without sense. This minute, elaborate, orchestrated life forever plays its motiveless symphonies. The mind learns and knows not, turning its back to truth. It studies surface laws by surface thought, life's steps surveys, and nature's process sees, not seeing for what she acts or why we live. It marks her tireless care of just device, her patient intricacy of fine detail, the ingenious spirit's brave inventive plan in our great futile mass of endless works, adds purposeful figures to our purposeless sum. Its gable stories piles, its climbing roofs on the close-carved foundations she has laid. 
imagined citadels reared in mythical art or mounts the star of dream to a mystic moon transient creations point and hit the sky a world conjecture scheme is laid out on the dim floor of minds in certitude or painfully built a fragmentary whole impenetrable a mystery recondite is the vast plan of which we are a part its harmonies are discords to our view because we know not the great theme the sir inscrutable work the cosmic agencies only the fringe of a wide surge we see our instruments have not that greater light our will tunes not to the eternal will our hearts a sight is too blind and passionate impotent to share in nature's mystic tact inept to feel the pulse and core of things our reason cannot sound life's mighty sea and only counts its waves and scans its foam it knows not whence this motion's touching pass it sees not whither sweeps the hurrying flood only it strives to canalize its powers and hopes to turn its course to human ends but all its means come from the inconscient store unseen here act dim huge world energies and only trickles and currents are our share our mind leaps far off from the authentic light catching at little fragments of the truth in a small corner of infinity our lives are inlets of an ocean's force our conscious movements have sealed origins but with those shadowy seeds no converse hope no understanding binds our comrade paths our acts emerge from a crypt our minds ignore our deepest depths are ignorant of themselves even our body is a mystery shop as our earth roots lurk screened below our earth so lie unseen our roots of mind and life our springs are kept close hid beneath within our souls are moved by powers behind the wall in the subterranean reaches of the spirit a puissance acts and wrecks not what it means using unthinking monitors and scribes it is the cause of what we think and feel the troglodytes of the subconscious mind ill trained slow stammering interpreters only of their small tasks routine aware and busy with the record in our cells concealed in the subliminal secrecies made an obscure occult machinery captured the mystic morse whose measured lilt transmits the messages of the cosmic force a whisper falls into life's inner ear and echoes from the dumb subconscious caves speech leaps thought quivers the heart vibrates the will answers and tissue 
and not obey the call. Our lives translate these subtle intimacies. All is the commerce of a secret power. A thinking puppet is the mind of life. Its choice is the work of elemental strengths that know not their own birth and end and cause, and glimpse not the immense intent the self. In this nether life of man, drab hued and dull, yet filled with poignant small ignoble things, the conscious door is pushed a hundred ways and feels the push, but not the hands that try. For none can see the master ironic truth to whom our figure selves are marionettes. Our deeds, unwitting movements in their grasp, our passionate strife and entertainments see, ignorant themselves of their own fount of strength, they play their part in the enormous whole. Agent of darkness imitating light, spirits obscure and moving things obscure, unwillingly they serve a mightier power. Anankes and genes organizing chance, channels perverse of a stupendous will, tools of the unknown who use us as their tools. Invested with power in nature's nether stay, into the actions mortals think their own, they bring the incoherences of fate, or make a doom of times a slipshod caprice, and toss the lives of men from hand to hand in an inconsequent and devious game. Against all higher truth, their stuff rebels. Only to tighten force their will lies prone. Inordinate their hold on human hearts, in all our natures turns the interview. Insignificant architects of low-built lives and engineers of interest and desire out of crude earthiness and muddy thrills and coarse reactions of material nerve, they build our huddled structures of self-will and the ill-lighted mansions of our thought, or with the ego's factories and marts surround the beautiful temple of the soul. Artists minute of the hues of littleness, they set the mosaic of life's comedy, or plan the trivial tragedy of our days, arrange the deed, combine the circumstance and the fantasia of the mood's costume. These unwise prompters of man's ignorant heart and tutors of his stumbling speech and will movers of petty wraths and lusts and hates, and changeful thoughts and shallow emotion starts. These slight illusion makers with their masks, painters of the decor of the dull hued stage, and nimble sin shifters of the human play, ever are busy with this illit scene. Ourselves incapable to build our faith only as actors speak and start our paths until the peace is done and we pass off into a brighter time and subtler space. Thus they inflict their little pygmy law and curb the mounting slow uprise of man. 
then he is too scanty walk with death the glow